Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlumiTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at fatty acids and glycerol. Now we're going to look at um, what the fatty acid is and what the glycerol is. We're also going to look at triglycerides as well uh, and do a bit of nomenclature uh, in terms of uh, naming these quite large molecules. Um, and we're also going to look at the health implications of these as well, uh, in particular cis and trans fats and saturated and unsaturated fats as well. So we're going to start with um, what a fatty acid is and what glycerol is and etc. So we'll start from there. So fatty acid is effectively just a long chain carboxylic acid. So what that means is you have a very long hydrocarbon tail on the end and you just have carboxylic acid at the end. So these, as you can imagine, are not very soluble um, because of that large hydrocarbon chain. So these generally resemble waxes or solids, so they're quite, they're quite big molecules. Now, um, the next one is glycerol. Now, glycerol has an IUPAC name of propane-1,2,3-triol. Uh, it basically has three alcohol groups uh, all joined to a propane molecule. So that's another word for glycerol. And actually, if you join your carboxylic acid together and your glycerol, you will actually make um, a fat, which is what you would find in foods. Um, now, you can get two types of fats. Um, in particular, uh, you can have, um, or like fatty acids in particular, uh, where you can have a cis and a trans version of the fat. Now, um, cis and trans are basically geometric isomers. So if you're not sure about geometric isomers, there is a video that looks into this in a lot more detail. So we just click on the link below uh, and you can have a look at that. But just to kind of give you an overview, um, basically, if you have a double bond, which sometimes you might have in, um, in fatty acids, then you can have a geometric isomer. And this is where um, you have fixed positions of different groups. So if you imagine, here's our model here. And you can see that actually what we have is a double bond in the middle, and we have two um, R groups which are on this side. Now these can extend, these can extend further along um, and make a big long um, amino acid, um, not an amino acid, a fatty acid. So um, this would be in the um, trans formation, or you could also no, no, uh, name that as E. Um, so this is where you have a trans fat, um, or sometimes your double bond. Uh, and you can see that's quite like a strain, like a straight chain. But sometimes your uh, fatty acid can be like that, where you might have an actual. Uh, so hold it up there. You can see we've got our R groups both at the bottom, our double bond there, and this is called a cis fat. So this is where um, your both fats or both of these R groups are actually pointing in the same direction. Uh, and actually what they'll have, if you imagine this extending down, and this one extending down into a long hydrocarbon chain, you can effectively see that there's a bit like a bend in your, in your molecule. Now, this does have health implications as well, which I'll come on to, uh, which I'll come on to later, but um, your, um, basically your trans fats are generally man-made. Um, they're actually made by uh, synthetically and put into cakes and biscuits, um, and your cis fat, which is this one here, um, which is where the both of them on there, most natural um, fats with a double bond in there um, are actually in that formation there. Now, fats with a double bond in are actually described as unsaturated fats. So um, that means that actually um, the unsaturated fats are actually um, quite healthy um, for you. And I'll come on to that later about cholesterol. Um, and whereas your trans fats um, um, have actually been proven to be uh, there's some research there to suggest that these trans fats are actually unhealthy for you. Um, but all in all, you get two types of fats. You basically get a saturated fat, which is where you have no double bonds, and an unsaturated fat, um, where you have um, double bonds in there. Um, and basically, the more double bonds you have, generally the healthier the fat is. So a hydrocarbon with no double bonds in are classed as saturated fats, and they are not so good for health. But again, I'll come on to that later. Okay, so we're just going to look at some reactions here first. So the first one is glycerol and a fatty acid. Now, if we take our glycerol and a fatty acid, like I say, we can make um, a fat, or we can call this a triglyceride. Uh, and this is basically just an ester. So this is an esterification reaction. We have an alcohol plus carboxylic acid will form ester plus water. But what you need to be able to do is to, is to draw the molecule and suggest which parts have come from where. 
So as you can see, I've tried to draw some different colours so you can see it easily. So the red one, uh, any red on this has come from the uh, tri um, your glycerol, and anything that's come from the blue, uh, anything in blue has come from your fatty acid. So you can see what's actually happened, and I'll highlight this here as well, is actually the OH from your glycerol and the H from your carboxylic acid have actually joined to make water. Um, and because we have three of them, we can form three molecules of water. Uh, and effectively, what you make is a very large ester, which is called a um, triglyceride. Um, and these can be used as fuels. And this is actually really, really, um, uh, this is effectively a fat and um, almost solid. Um, and fats have high melting points when we do this as well. Uh, the R group will represent a long uh, hydrocarbon chain, so that could be 14, 16, 20 carbons long. These are really big, long molecules. Um, you are expected to know where these come from. Okay, in terms of um, these and naming them, um, you've got to be able to name them as well. Specifically, if you're doing OCR chemistry, um, this is particularly applied for you. Um, so in terms of nomenclature, you can see that we've got um, three different types of carboxylic acids here. These are your fatty acids, so the big long hydrocarbons. Now, in terms of naming, um, there's a certain systematic way of doing it. So um, the first thing you've got to do is identify how long your carbon chain is. Um, so I've done this in a skeletal form, uh, and each point on here represents a carbon. So, for example, this first one, we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, 16 is basically hexadec, uh, and that's how we'd actually name it. So, hexa for the 6, and dec meaning 10, so it's 6 and 10. Uh, again, it comes from the German, so uh, in terms of their numbering, um, if you study German, um, the numbering system is actually... Um, done in a back-to-front way towards an English system, which we say 16. So this is hexadec. Um, so we're going to put that in, I'll write that in red. So this is hex, hexadec. Okay, and because this is just a carboxylic acid with no double bonds in there, we call it hexadec anoic, and then acid. Now, in terms of the naming, we've also got to put some numbers on the end, and there's um, depending on what you've got, you actually need at least three different sections of number. Now, the first number that we'll have to put down is basically how many carbons we have. Now, hexadec tells us that we have 16, so I'm going to put 16 there. Then we put a comma, and the second set of numbers um, is basically how many double bonds we have, if we do have any. Now, you can see in this molecule, we don't have any double bonds, so we put a zero next to it. So we call that hexadecanoic acid. 16, 0. Um, and the third set of numbers would be, if you had a double bond, where were them double bonds? But we'll come on to these specific examples here in a minute. So, that's the first one. This is the next one. So again, if we have a look from here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is going to be um, uh, tetra deck because we've got 14. So we'll start with tetra. Um, and then deck. Okay, now what's a little bit different about this is actually we have a double bond now. So the double bond obviously signifies an alkene. So we put the tetradec first. We always number from our carboxylic acid. So this is a carbon there, so that's one, two, three, and then four. Now we always pick the lowest number, which is the three. So that's the number that we're going to pick where this double bond is. So this is tetradec, uh, and we're going to put three, hyphen three, and this is enoic, because it's an alkene. So put enoic and then just acid on the end. Uh, and in terms of the numbering, the first number, if you can remember, is the number of carbons in this chain. So the number here is 14. So we're gonna put 14, comma. And um, then our second set of numbers is the number of double bonds. We have one double bond in here. So we're gonna put one on there. Uh, and then we have one more set of numbers, um, which is effectively which carbon does this double bond sit on? Now it sits on the third carbon, so we're going to put three on there and put that in brackets. And that is how you do a systematic naming of your fatty acid. So tetradec, three enoic acid, 14 for the number of carbons in the chain, one double bond in the third carbon. And that's your numbering system at the end. Now, if we come on to this one, 
where we have two double bonds this time. Um, so we're going to start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 carbons. So again, this one is going to start off as um, tetradec, because we still have 14, as you can see. Um, in terms of the numbering, we can see we've got some double bonds. We have to work out where they are. So that's going to be first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, so you can see here that we actually have two alkenes here, and they're on the third and seventh carbon. So when we start from here, we're going to do tetradec. So that's going to be three comma seven hyphen. So I'm just going to rub these green numbers out so I can have some space. So tetradec three comma seven, and this is going to be dienoic acid because we have two. So it's dienoic acid. So that's going to go on there, and that di is very important. If you had three carbons, it'd be tri. If it was four, if it, so if you had three double bonds, it'd be tri. If it was four, it'd be tetraenoic acid. So you've got to remember to put that in. Then you put your numbering at the end. We've got 14 carbons, so that's just going to be 14. Uh, we've got two double bonds, so we're going to put 14, two. Uh, and then in brackets, we need to say where the double bonds are. So the double bonds are on the third and seventh carbon. So we're going to put three, comma, seven, and close the brackets. Now, it seems really, really long, but it is a logical process, and it shows exactly how many carbons you've got, how many double bonds you've got, if you have any, and if you do have any, where are them double bonds sitting? And that's how you actually name them systematically. Now, you can actually use these skills here to actually name a um, triglyceride, or we call it a triester. Um, and it's really, really simple. So all we do is we use the same numbering system as we've done over here. So uh, this one, for example, here is 12, um, and you've got CH3 and a C there. So we've got 12, 13, 14. So this one is tetradecanoic acids, this one here. Um, so I'll just write that on there. Uh, tetradec, oops, decanoic acid uh, and you can see the numbering we have 14 and 0 because we have 14 carbons and no alkenes or no double bonds and um, this one at the bottom is actually the same as the one at the top so these two are the same and um, but this middle one is different so you can see we've got 14 there in the middle 15 16 so this one is actually called um, hex a deck anoic acid, uh, and this one's going to be 16 comma 0. So, and you can see that actually we have two lots of tetradecanoic acids, uh, which is on carbon 1 and carbon 3, uh, and we have one hexadecanoic acid um, on carbon 2. So if we were to name this, we would start with the red bit first. So I'm just going to write this just along the side here, just so you can see. So we do this in green. So we'll do it in blue, I think. So if we do the first one, so here we'll start with this, which is propane, because this is going to be very, very long. So it's propane, um, and then we can see on the first and third carbon, we have on the first and third carbon, which is here. So put propane uh, one, three, uh, and we have di tetradecanoic acid. So you can see here we have three of them, we have two of them. That's going to be di and then tetradecanoic So I'll put that up on there. Uh, and then this is obviously an acid, tetradecanoic acid. Uh, the numbering is 14 and 0, because we have two of them. So 14, 0. Uh, and then we have hexadecanoic. So put a hyphen there, hexa decanoic acid, um, because that's in the, oops, sorry, I should put two hexa decanoic acids, just to say where that is. So I'm put a thing in there, so that's two hexa decanoic acid. Um, and then 
uh, we put down the number in at the end, so that's 16, 0. So as you can see, that is very, very long and very complex, but it's a logical system. And you just literally you start off with propane, uh, and then you say what acids you've got coming off um, at which branch. So that's the first, second, and third, and you number from the top down to the bottom. Okay, and um, just a final thing, um, just to uh, highlight some of the um, medical implications of these as well. Um, saturated fats and unsaturated fats. So saturated fats are those with no double bonds, and unsaturated fats are those with um, with with double bonds in them. So um, in terms of the health implications, you need to know that saturated fats are actually quite bad for you. And what they do is they actually increase the level of um, bad cholesterol in the blood, which could lead to stroke and heart disease. Whereas your unsaturated fats, so moni, mono and poly unsaturated fats, where you have lots of double bonds, are actually uh, generally tend to increase the amount of good cholesterol that your blood produces and, and stops the bad cholesterol from building up. Um, another one as well is looking at cis and trans fats as well. Um, even those with double bonds in, so these unsaturated fats, um, in a, like I say, there has been um, trials and um, scientific evidence to suggest that trans fats are actually bad for you. And these are synthetically made. We don't need them in our body and they're not made in nature. So trans fats are actually, um, uh, can actually increase your bad cholesterol and could lead again to stroke and heart disease, etc. Um, whereas your cis fats generally occur naturally and they're natural fats which don't seem to uh, pose too many problems in terms of the levels of bad cholesterol. Um, but you do need to know how this links together, particularly if you're doing OCR with bad fats um, and cholesterol levels. But uh, yeah, I hope that helps, especially the naming of it. Make sure you name it. This one's a very tough one. It's unlikely you'll get anything like that in the exam, but you are expected to be able to name these ones and know how you can make triglycerides as well from glycerol and fatty acids. But that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.